Kelly's decade as Apple CEO, the company's revenue grew a thousand percent. Now, 30 years later, numerous projects on. He is launching Obi World Phone. John Scully with me now. So, John, great to have you with us. Your company sells phones in India, Southeast Asia, parts of Africa. Why target customers in those parts of the world? Well, Deidre, great to be back with you. Silicon Valley is legendary for building design-led companies like Beats, like Apple, like Tesla, like Nest. But these are companies that have always targeted the premium end of their market. What's exciting for us is that we're taking the commoditized industry of smartphones, over 2 billion phones a year, and we're targeting gaps in the market, particularly in the fastest growing countries, and bringing in the highest quality technology, typically found in a $700 phone, but we're able to deliver it for $199 with no compromises in terms of fit, finish, components, all of those things. We have an entirely different business model. So, John, I want to ask you how you were able to do, and we're looking at video now of design, which is really sharp, as Apple is known for, and how you did that at a price that you can offer the phones you just mentioned. But I'm wondering about connectivity. There are serious challenges. I mean, are there cell phone towers everywhere that you need them? I mean, how is the infrastructure going to work in places that aren't as developed as North America, for example? Well, that's a great question, and, and it creates a huge opportunity for us because uh, the countries we're in and moving into will be in 70 countries by 2017, and these countries are going through a conversion from low bandwidth to 3G, 4G LTE. These are the high bandwidths that we're accustomed to in the U.S., so it's a perfect time to be doing this, and the infrastructure is actually quite good in the cities, and as you know, in those parts of the world, uh, up to 70% of the population actually lives in cities. So it's, it's a very attractive market opportunity. But here's what really made it interesting for us, is that you look at the big international brands' smartphones, like Sony, like HTC, like Microsoft. Uh, they have thousands of people, tens of thousands of people in their organizations. And the reality is you cannot afford those old-fashioned structures and be able to compete in a commoditized industry and still deliver the best of quality in terms of uh, technology and components. And so we're doing with hundreds of people what these traditional companies uh, built organizations with tens of thousands of people. And we can do it uh, in, in very novel ways. And then we have the best designers in the world, former Apple a head of design, Robert Bruner and his team, who worked with me when I was CEO of Apple, uh, had just done a spectacular job. Our phones look great, and they don't look anything like an iPhone. Uh, they certainly don't, and obviously you're able to, to offer, as you say, this product, a quality product, as a lot of other manufacturers just have to commoditize the rest of the business. You mentioned your tenure at Apple. What stands out to you now about whether it's the new Apple TV that we are talking about, this $200 model, uh, but the idea of streaming a year from now? Do you think that going into TV is the next right step? I, I think it's a brilliant step for Apple. They've been taking their time to get there. Uh, but I think they're going to end up uh, doing the same thing to the television industry that they did to the music industry. Uh, the technology is not the hard part. I think they've pretty much got that solved, and we'll see the first example of that with their new Apple TV. But they really need to have is the access to the local live broadcasts, and that means lots of negotiations with content companies, with broadcast companies, getting the rights worked out. But I think Apple is going to really revolutionize the experience. I mean, what is more clunky than the old-fashioned set-top boxes where nothing's easy to activate, they never work right, and it's actually a monopoly because there's about $20 billion a year spent that we have to lease boxes through the cable companies, which are just obsolete. And so I think it's a real chance for Apple to... Uh, go in and revolutionize another industry. All right. And when you say that, I'm assuming also you're contextualizing it with Apple Music and then Apple Watch, which still is undetermined whether it's going to be a hit. Is the Apple Watch the next iPad? I'm sure you remember this as well as anybody, but people complained for about four years about the iPad. It was a stupid name, didn't understand. And then all of a sudden sales just took off. Will the watch be the same? Well, I don't have a watch. I have every other Apple products. I love Apple products. Uh, I'm waiting for them to untether the watch from the iPhone and uh, find out what the, what the really killer purpose of it is. But it's beautifully designed, no question about it. Everything Apple does, they, they, they do with uh, patience and care 
and incredible competence. So uh, I can't predict the Apple Watch, but I can say I think the Apple TV is great. I think Apple Pay is terrific. Uh, I think uh, even the rumors of Apple doing into the car business, it sounds uh, spectacular. A car is a computer on wheels. So I think Apple's days are really, really positive ahead. And I'm uh, excited to have been a, p a part of the journey. And uh, innovation, 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 right? The, uh, it sounds like for Apple and for your company, OB World Phone. John Scully, thank you so much for the time joining us there from California.